We talked a little bit about this last time I was up with you and Melissa up in New York, and, and we think that this kind of two-year period from September of last year through September of 2020 is going to look very much like 2000, 2001, and 2002. You remember the tech bubble popped. There was this return to normal rally from late December through January of 2001. And then it was downhill from there as people realized, well, it's not going back to normal. We're not going back to those crazy valuations. And I think we've got the same thing playing out here. The tech bubble 2.0 popped. We had stocks down 40, 50, 60% from their highs. And now people are saying, oh, well, it's going to get better. You know, look at Netflix recovery. Netflix burned $1.5 billion of cash in the quarter. That's a far cry from being profitable, quote unquote, in my book. So cash is king. You know, cash beat 95% of assets in 2018. We think cash will win again this year. So let me push back just a little bit. As, as yeah. I remember 2000, 2001 and the, and the bursting of the tech bubble, relatively more of the companies that were part of that bubble at that time really either weren't companies, didn't have businesses, weren't profitable. And today, relative to that time, aren't, with the exception maybe of Netflix, you, you make a good point there, aren't many more of them actually thriving, ongoing businesses. Now, Uber is not. Uber doesn't make uh, money. Well, I, I'd, I'd actually push back on your pushback, okay. which is good. You know, that's what <laughs> all discussion's right. all about, right? Yeah. You know, if you think about it, we had the, we had the big four back in 2000. We had Cisco, we had Microsoft, we had Qualcomm, we had Intel. No one would say those aren't real companies. You know, those companies today, if you held those four companies for 18 years, you're still underwater. That's pretty lousy performance for almost two decades. And those stocks went down 80 plus percent. They just got overvalued. And you look at, you know, Amazon and, and Netflix trading at triple digit P.E. ratios. It's just silly. Now, a company like Apple with a you know, low double digit P.E. ratio, that probably has some upside from here. But we look at overall valuation of the overall market. And we think, you know, back in October 11th, when we first got together, and I said things could go down 40 to 50 percent to fair value. We might even go below fair value. But, you know, we're down about 10, 12 percent from that point. So we've got another 30 to 40 percent to go to get to fair value. Now, we don't have to get to fair value, but the way math works, for every day you're above average, you got to spend a day below average. You know, Mark, the last time we spoke, it's Melissa, uh, a lot has actually changed. I mean, the Fed's stance towards its interest yeah. rate uh, hiking path has changed substantially, I believe, since the last time we spoke. So doesn't that remove some of the risk? Um, does that maybe make that downturn that you're calling for a little bit more shallow? It certainly no, removes actually, the risk I, of, of companies not being able to service their own debt, which is part of your thesis, when, as, uh, specifically when it comes to the small caps. Yeah, no, I think, look, I think the damage is already done. Let's, let's take small caps. 37% of small cap companies don't make any money. That's real time as we speak. More than one third of companies in the Russell 2000 don't make any money, no profits at all. So it's tough to service your debt if you don't make any money. The problem with raising interest rates is the damage is done, right? LIBOR is up 300%. People's adjustable rate mortgages are gonna go up 20, 30, 40% this year when they reset. That's real cash out of consumers' pockets. Corporate earnings have been really poor so far. You guys have been announcing them every day. Most of them have been bad, a couple upside surprises. But we think the damage is done, the liquidity is gonna be tighter, and whether the Fed pauses or doesn't pause really doesn't matter at this point. They already went through the hiking cycle from, you know, basically zero, where they never should have been to begin with. And now we're, you know, closer to neutral. I still think we're 100 basis points from neutral where it should be. But uh, we think the damage is done. And 2001, if we don't have a recession, which I think we will, but if we don't, it's going to be a significant slowdown. That's going to be tough for corporate profits and tough for stock quick prices. Quick answer. Do you see a debt crisis on the horizon? Corporate, uh, household, yes. you do? 2020. Yeah, again, I think it plays out just like 2001, 2002. Remember, all those fiber companies, there was all that excess fiber in the ground, lots of excess capacity. That's what bubbles do. They create excess capacity. It gets financed with debt. 2002, we had WorldCom, Enron, lots of debt bubble crashing. The same thing's going to happen in 2020 when this mountain of debt comes due. So the next 18 months are going to be very challenging.